In this video, we're going to be talking about inequalities. Uh, let's make sure we understand the difference between equations and inequalities. An equation might say something like 3x is equal to 18. It is two equal quantities, two equal values. An inequality, however, is a comparison statement between two unequal uh, amounts. So I might say something as simple as 3x does not equal 18. That's an inequality statement. However, the inequality statements that we're going to be working with actually use other inequality symbols. For example, I might say x is less than 41, or strictly less than 41. Um, I can flip that sign around. Perhaps z is going to be greater than or strictly greater than negative 2. Uh, there are a couple of other inequality symbols that you may be less familiar with. One looks like this. It's the less than sign with a line underneath that, and that means less than or equal to the number. So x is less than or equal to negative 17. Um, that may seem unusual because we're talking about inequalities, things that can't be equal. These are still considered inequalities because they are most likely less than, but they could be equal to that number. And then x is greater than or equal to 4. So it is these inequality symbols that we're mainly going to be working with. And while we're talking about inequalities, we also want to talk about how to graph it. Um, we didn't really so much talk about how to graph solutions to equations, but if I took this 3x equals 18 and I solved that by dividing both sides by 3, I would find that x equals 6. And the way that I would graph that is to draw a number line, and you kind of have two options for drawing number lines. I can either put my number in the middle and then on the left and the right of it, put the two numbers that would appear to the left and the right on the number line, right? Or you have another option. I can show where 6 is in relationship to 0. Not every number line has to have a 0 on it. We're kind of used to that. I think somewhere in elementary school, that's the idea we're given. But it's not true. This is a perfectly fine number line. But whichever number line you would want to draw, if I was going to graph the solution, basically it would just require putting a dot on top of 6. That's where my solution's at. We want to be able to graph these other inequalities as well. When I say x is greater than or equal to 4, so again, I have a couple of different options for what my number line is going to look like. I'm going to draw that kind this time. So when x is greater than or equal to 4, well, it could be equal to 4, so I put a dot there, but it could also be greater than 4. So I would need to make a big, thick arrow to the right with all of those numbers that are greater than 4. Uh, some people don't like drawing this big thick arrow right on top of the number line. So another option would be above the number line, draw your dot and your arrow to the right. So that way it's not right on top. But it is important to do both parts. I need a dot on my boundary and I need an arrow showing which direction I go from there. Uh, the reverse here, when x is less than or equal to negative 17, so if I'm going to put my negative 17 in the middle, I have to be careful when I put my numbers on either side, right? Because negative 16 would be on the right side since it's negative. So x is less than or equal to negative 17. So it could be negative 17, or it could be anything less than that, all of these values here to the left. When I look at z is greater than negative 2. So... Here's my 0, here's my negative 2. I can't put a dot on top of the negative 2. Z can't actually equal negative 2. But it can be everything right up to that. So to show that we can go up to negative 2 without using the number itself, we actually put an open dot there on the negative 2. And if Z is greater than that amount, then I would shade to the right. Now when X is less than 41, so here's my 0, here's my 41. Again, it can be everything up to that 41, but not actually including it. So I would put an open dot. Notice it's kind of huge to show that it's open, and that's OK. Uh, and then less than. So everything to the left of that, including the arrow, gets big and shaded dark. Right? So notice I've shown you a couple of different types of doing this, a couple of different ways of numbering the number line, and whether you want to put your arrow right on top of the number line or just above it, that's fine either way. All right, now we want to talk about 
solving inequalities. When we are solving inequalities, there's really only one difference from solving equations. It's here, and it's in capital letters in red, because this is a big difference. It's only one thing, but if you don't do this right, you're going to get a lot of answers wrong. When you multiply or divide both sides of your inequality by a negative, you have to change the direction of the inequality arrow. You have to. And a brief explanation as to why that is. If I look at a number line, and I look over here and I compare 1 and 2. 1 is less than 2. That's pretty obvious. But if I compare them to their negatives, to their opposites, well, wait a minute. Negative 1 is actually greater than negative 2. Notice, both my numbers got changed to their opposites, and that made the direction of the inequality arrow have to change. This is true for all inequalities. Okay, So let's do a few practice problems. With x plus 3 is greater than 8, I want to get x by itself. So to undo the addition of 3, I'm going to subtract 3. Those will cancel. x is going to be greater than 5. When n divided by 5 is less than or equal to negative 20, I want to undo that divided by 5. So I want to multiply that by 5. Or maybe you want to write it as 5 over 1, so it's easier to see why those cancel. And then on the right side, I have to do that times 5 as well. And negative 20 times 5 is negative 100, less than or equal to. OK, if you look at both of these problems, both involve a minus sign in them. But in neither one of them did I multiply or divide both sides of my inequality by a negative number. So I didn't have to change anything about the inequality sign. It just got carried down. Over here, however, in example 3, things change. k has been multiplied by negative 3. So I'm going to have to depot and divide both sides by negative 3. Ah, since I'm dividing both sides by negative 3, this is where my inequality symbol is going to have to change. Instead of being a less than arrow, I'm going to have to make it a greater than arrow. My negative 3's cancel out, so I have k. 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. Now, to graph these solutions, x is greater than 5. So 5. 4, 6 on the other side, greater than 5. Open dot, because it cannot equal 5. right? And it's less than or equal to negative 100. So here's my 0. Negative 100 would be to the left of that. So less than or equal to. That means filled in dot. It can equal the negative 100. And n is going to be less than that. So that's everything to the left k is greater than negative 4. Do the other type of number line this time. So k is greater than negative 4. Negative 4 is my boundary. Open dot on negative 4. Greater than that. So to the right. Things get bigger as we go to the right. So that's the way the solutions and the graphs would look for those examples. We can also do two-step inequalities. Um, and just like with equations, we need to remember, since we're undoing what's been done to the variable, we need to go in smeg order. We need to undo in the opposite of the order of operations. So if I start with something like this, negative x minus 12 is greater than or equal to negative 41. So I look for a subtraction or addition. Oh, well, here's some subtraction. I'm going to undo that by adding 12 to both sides. That leaves me with negative x is greater than or equal to negative 41 plus 12 is negative 29. I'm not done because x isn't by itself. Just like before, that's my goal. I want to get x by itself. Well, how do I get x by itself? It helps if I remember that negative x is the same thing as negative 1x. It's greater than or equal to negative 29. So since I have x multiplied by negative 1, I want to divide both sides by negative 1. Ah. But I'm dividing both sides by a negative. That means my arrow has to change directions. Since it could be equal to before, it can still be equal to now. That doesn't change. But the direction of the arrow changes. And those will cancel, leaving me with x. Negative 29 divided by negative 1 is 29. When I graph that, I 
I'm going to have a closed dot for the 29 because it could equal the 29. And x is going to be less than that, so it's going to go to your left. I rewrote example 5 with a capital B so that it would be easier to tell and not look like a 36. Having the variable on the right side of the inequality doesn't change anything about it. Um, you might, however, want to rewrite this as 3 eighths b plus 5 is greater than negative 1. If you really don't like having the variable on the right-hand side, we can flip-flop the two sides of our inequality. But if we do that, we also have to change the direction of the arrow. Remember, you want your inequality mouth to try to eat the bigger number. So if this is the bigger part and we move it to the right-hand side, I also have to change the direction of my inequality. Let's SPO the 5 from both sides. Since my variable is multiplied by this fraction 3 eighths, I'm going to also multiply it by a fraction, but this time the reciprocal, in order to cancel that out. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Remember, negative 6 is the same thing as negative 6 over 1. So 3 and negative 6 can be reduced. And I get b is greater than negative 16. When I do a quick graph, it cannot equal negative 16. It can only be greater than negative 16. To conclude our notes, we've got four do now problems for you. We want you to solve and graph the solution of all four of these, including down here with this word problem. You're gonna to have to write the inequality to represent the word problem, then solve it and graph it. Press pause now. So this first one is pretty straightforward. It's only a one step. X has been divided by negative three. To do the opposite of that, I'm gonna to have to multiply by negative three. Same thing with my right hand side of my inequality. Those are going to cancel, but since I multiplied by a negative on both sides, I need to change the direction of my inequality symbol. And x is now greater than negative 15. Here's 0, here's negative 15. Open circle because it cannot equal negative 15, but it can be greater than negative 15. And I make that nice and dark. Same thing here, we have a single step. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides to undo the adding 7. So y is less than or equal to negative 15. Notice I don't change the direction of the inequality. I did not multiply or divide by a negative, so everything stays the same there in the middle. Same uh, number here, but when I graph this inequality, I need a solid dot on the negative 15 because it could actually equal that. And then y is going to be less than, so I need to shade to the right and make my arrowhead darker as well. For letter C, I've got a two-step inequality here. It's probably going to be easier for you to write this left-hand side in standard form. Remember, it's a negative 3k. So when I rewrite this in standard form, it's going to be negative 3k plus 8 is greater than negative 4. Now as I work backwards, I need to undo the addition by subtracting. And then to get rid of this times negative 3, I would need to depo by negative 3. That's going to cancel that out, but since I divided both sides by negative 3, the direction of my inequality arrow changes. And negative 12 divided by negative 3 is 4. Open, because it cannot equal it. k is less than 4. I'm going to go to the left. Last but not least is this word problem. Uh, notice we've already defined the variable for you, p, the original price of the jacket. What I know is that once I have the original price of the jacket, I'm going to deduct my $3 off coupon, and I can spend up to $30. So I know the other side is going to be 30 but then what inequality symbol do we have right there? Well, this price, the price on sale of the jacket, has to be less than or equal to $30. It could equal $30. If I can spend up to 30, that includes the number 30. Or maybe it would be less than that, and that's fine with me to have some money left over. 
Now I would finish solving this by adding 3 to both sides. So the original price of the jacket is less than or equal to 33. Closed dot on the 33 and arrow to the left.